Well, this Starlink video is gonna be a little bit different than what you've seen before. We've seen a lot of videos that talk about unboxing, snapping the stuff together, plugging in everything, and then doing a quick speed test, and then you're done. Well, it's not quite that easy. So this video is gonna be all about running that Starlink cable from your outside of your house into your house. So stick around and we'll get into the details. Well, as a comparison before and after, here is the speed test with my existing internet provider. It is extremely slow to upload most of my videos. It'll take between two and four hours just to get a video uploaded, a, a gig, maybe a gig and a half. And I usually resort to using the hotspot on my phone to get the video uploaded. So we're gonna improve these numbers greatly. I just don't know how much we're going to improve them, but anything is going to be way better than what I'm getting right now. So the first logical thing you think about is what is existing on my house now and how can I reuse that? Well, here's a couple of dish antennas that's up there. The cabling is ran here. It's ran up into the attic through a, punching a hole through a screen in that vent up there and then going on into the house. Well, I didn't want to end up with something as obvious as that. And the other thing is, I've been up into my attic many times trying to do things, and it is an unpleasant world up there. Even now, this time of year when it can be kind of cool up there, it's still a place that I don't want to spend much time. There's a lot of insulation, and there's a huge amount of ducting for the air conditioning and heating that I didn't want to tamper with. And then once you get it in there, You've got to figure out some way that you're going to fish the wire down through the wall and pull it out through a hole that you're going to put in the wall and maybe use an existing one. If you want to get kind of tacky, you just punch a hole in your drywall ceiling or whatever kind of ceiling you have, and then you go ahead and pull the wire down and, you know, that, that looks kind of tacky. Been there, done that. I wanted to do a better job. So here's my strategy. This is the northwest corner of my home looking north this way. I've been out with the Starlink app and I've done some tests and this area right here has proven to be good. I think it came up to like 98% anywhere on this side of my house for the next 15 to 20 feet gets me about the same. If I start going further, there's a few trees in the distance and they start knocking it down. So I understand here that the dish is going to be looking almost straight up. So I'm going to start off with the dish with the ground mount I have a pole mount that's on order, but it won't be delivered until about 30 or 40 days from now. So a couple of ways I could get into my house. The first way might be to go ahead and drill an entryway through the brick and go that way. I'm not really interested in drilling that brick. It had to be a pretty big hole, and uh, I'm not sure my drill is up to that. The other way is to route the wire into the attic and then pull it over to some location to where it could go down through the wall. And I've talked about that. Anywhere on this side of my house, the attic has such a limited amount of space to get into, uh, I'm just not going there. <laughs> and I'll give you a little uh, history back on that. I've been up there years ago and I just about got trapped and I'm not going back up there. So my strategy now is I'm going to place it here initially on the ground mount, and then I'll go with a pole mount that'll be up about the edge of the uh, eave here. I'm gonna run the cabling down along under the soffit around the corner of this porch area here. And I'll show you in just a minute, I have a entryway that I can get through a metal panel that's around there. As I run the cabling along the soffit, I get to this supporting aluminum, looks like about a, a two by two here. I'll have to drill through that, pull the wire through that to enter inside the pool screen enclosure. Continue running along the edge of the soffit, making a 90 degree turn here, and then down to the destination wall. Okay, here on the opposite side of what this is, it's a porch area that's been enclosed. So it's a uh, glass and brick, as you can see, but I'll continue running the cabling around following the soffit here 
And at this point, I have a uh, enclosed metal sheet panel, which on the opposite side of this is the porch. So there's uh, two layers of this uh, siding here. I guess it's aluminum siding, one here and one on the other side. There's insulation in between that. So I plan on putting a hole in at the top, pulling it through right there, and then I can install the router right at the base of where this panel is now. I have ordered the Starlink kit to access through the wall. It comes with a couple of grommets. It comes with a cable puller, and it also comes with a bit. I don't know what size bit that is, but at any rate, that kit's not gonna be here for another three weeks, and uh, I'm not gonna wait for it, of course. So I went by Lowe's and I picked up a couple of uh, bits, uh, holes, hole bits here. I got one that's seven eighths and one that's three quarter. I think maybe three quarter is what they say the hole should be. I've heard other people say, yeah, it could go through a three quarter, but you're gonna have a much less difficult time if you go on up to seven eighths. And either way, it's not gonna be a problem for me. I'm just concerned about when my uh, wall uh, kit comes in, what size will the grommets be? I don't want to make the hole so big that the uh, grommets are not going to work. It's a $25 kit, and I still plan on using it. Well, this is the next morning. FedEx didn't come till after dark. And this morning, I've been waiting for some sun to come out, which never came. I'm not going to do the complete unboxing of the Starlink. You've seen that already. Just the typical packaging. Now this is the new version Starlink, which has the rectangular dish as such. So here's what I'm really interested in. It comes with the cable, which both ends are available. With the previous version of Starlink, it was hardwired into the dish and you could only uh, feed the other end through as you uh, accessed your wall or your attic, whatever you were doing. So now you have access to both ends of the cable. It looks like this. This is the one that goes into the router. This is what goes into the dish itself. And I went ahead and prepared a couple of holes, three quarters and seven eighths, as uh, my test here to see which is gonna be the best. And we can see that uh, that end for the router is definitely out. Here's the smaller end. It goes through the three quarter pretty tight, but it does go. Seven eighths is pretty sloppy. So I'm gonna try to do a three quarter inch hole to get that egress into my home right there. So I'm gonna move the camera over to our first hole and we'll do some drilling. I'm going to drill a pilot hole first all the way through the wall because it's about three and a half, maybe four inches through the wall. And I know I want it right about in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that hole in first. I could feel that going through and I think I actually have four layers of this metal paneling here to go through. So I'll start and drill the large hole out here and go inside and drill from the inside. Just to be on the safe side, I went inside to check the pilot hole to make sure it's where I wanted it, and it is. Now I'm gonna try the uh, three quarter inch hole. Okay, we're all the way through. We'll go inside and take it from the inside. Okay, I'm inside now, and I've got the end that attaches to the dish. I'm gonna feed this back out through the wall and route it around to the outside location where I'm gonna locate the dish. My major concern now is this piece of metal that I drill the holes through is very sharp on the edges. I'm concerned about cutting the cable, so I'll be careful doing that I'm going to come back and line those holes with some duct tape so they won't be chafing on the cable itself. So we'll see if I can get this routed through. I 
Okay, I've covered the sharp edges of the metal on the inside and the outside with tape to protect that cable. Now it's a matter of feeding the cable out. Since this is the router side, I'm not going to leave but just a few feet of cable here. Most of the cable is going to go out into the yard. This is going much easier than I had anticipated. The next step is getting it through my pool enclosure, going through one of these two pieces of metal here. I'm going to go through the top one here. Same principle applies. I'll drill a pilot hole, then come back with the uh, larger hole. Okay, that went through both sides pretty well. I'll go ahead and drill the larger hole now. I'll go to the outside and do the other side. I've got the uh, sharp metal edges covered with tape again to protect the cable as it goes through. And this one seems to be a little bit tight. There it is. Through that, I'm just gonna feed this through now. And I'll come back later on and I'll clean up these holes here. I'll seal them off so no insects can get through and ensure that the cable is well protected. I want to see the grommets that uh, Starlink is sending out, that package I purchased, to see what they look like. That might be something I can uh, pick up here locally. I have my cable mostly outside. I think this may be enough, but we'll check it. I'm just temporarily going to lay the cable on these hooks. I'll come back and do a more permanent job. ready to attach the cable to the dish. It's just got this channel that it slides up in and it's only gonna go one way. Make sure it's all the way up and seated. Now we're gonna use the uh, ground mount that came with it. This snaps in place. It has a channel also that you feed it up into that channel. Snap it into place. I'm eventually going to put my pole mount back behind here, remove these bushes. But I think for now, I'm just going to find a level spot. It's facing north right here, almost north, maybe not directly. We're plugging in the router right now and we'll see how she does. It's about 30 seconds into it and I hear some noise coming from it, but no movement yet. All right, it's searching now. So it took about uh, a minute and 15 seconds for it to make its first movement. On the inside, there's no lights on at this point. I expected to see uh, at least some light come on. Here's the obligatory speed test that we all like to see. I ran this a couple of times. The very first time I ran it was actually uh, on the upload went to 33 and ran it a couple more times and it got to like 10 or 12 or something like that. But what I was dealing with before was 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 
on the upload and you saw that on the speed test that I started off with. A couple of things I'll talk about while the test is running is that I eventually hope to take this RVing. That's one of the promises that Starlink has made that they're going to make it where you can move it more conveniently than you can now. So there you have it. Uh, there's the test coming down. I'm very pleased with that. On the setup, the one thing that really puzzled me is when I plugged the power in, the antenna went ahead and it aligned itself for reception. But on the router, the only light was on the very bottom. When I turned it upside down, there's a pinhole little white light there showing that it's getting power. But on the face of the router, I expected to see some lights, but there are no lights. So I'll have to do a little more research on that, or maybe I'm just imagining something, but uh, no lights on the face of it. Well, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I know this was a little bit different than what most people were expecting, but I wanted to talk about routing that cable because that is the headache that we have to deal with when installing the Starlink. It's not just plugging it all together and getting it set on a pole. It's getting that cable routed through. I'm going to follow this up with another video when my pole mount comes in and when I get the wall mount coming in, I'll have all the cable tucked away looking pretty nice and I'll give you some lessons learned on that. That'll be three or four weeks down the road. But hit that like button if you like the video. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, thanks for watching. By the way, if you're wondering what all this is for, <laughs> I hope that's going to dog proof the dish so my dog won't pee on it until I get it on the pole. We'll have to see.